the Iranian army's ground force has unveiled its first indigenously manufactured jammer drone, which is designed to disrupt the communication between hostile unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, and their controllers. Mohajer 6 jammer drone, equipped with a high-tech system capable of transmitting interfering radio signals, was inaugurated in a ceremony attended by Major General Abdalrahim Musavi, the chief commander of the Iranian army, and a number of senior commanders of the army's ground force on Tuesday. The jammer drone is the army's first UAV with the capability to operate and support electronic warfare and electronic offense against the enemy's communication networks. Mohajer 6 jammer drone, along with 1,084 types of new military equipment and weapons, upgraded, reproduced and produced by the Army's ground force, joined the operational units of the force after the ceremony. The newly joined military equipment and weapons cover the fields of armor, artillery, rockets, drones, helicopters and electronic warfare. Iranian military experts and engineers have in recent years made remarkable breakthroughs in manufacturing a broad range of homegrown equipment, making the armed forces self-sufficient. Officials have repeatedly underscored that the country will not hesitate to strengthen its military capabilities, including its missile power, which are entirely meant for defense, and that Iran's defense capabilities will be never open for negotiations. Meanwhile, Rand's interest in drones and uninhabited vehicles really goes back to the Iran-Iraq war in the mid-1980s. The Iranians have been in the unmanned aerial vehicle UAV, business for several decades. The first generation of the Ababil that was used during the Iran-Iraq war appears to have been a low-cost attack munition, rather than an intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance ISR, platform. There are a number of reasons why Iran became interested in UAVs. During the Iran-Iraq war, air power was important but the attrition rates for crude combat aircraft were high. The UAVs let Iran fill some of these roles with a much cheaper, much easier to manufacture capability. Both cost and the technology allowed Iran to go down this path. It imported some technologies as well in the early days. UAVs filled roles that Iran's air force otherwise might not be able to meet at an acceptable loss rate of aircraft. What UAVs allow Tehran to do compared to a crude combat aircraft is mitigate the risk of loss. For example, UAVs can be flown much closer to the opposition forces and take imagery. If the drone gets shot down, then Tehran has lost the equivalent of a small, radio-controlled aircraft. Iran doesn't have to worry about getting the crew back. If they lose a pilot or crew downed in hostile territory, it becomes an issue. That just isn't the case with UAVs. They are also much cheaper than manned aircraft, at least at the low end of the capability spectrum. Iran's systems range from small, lightweight short-range systems all the way up through medium to heavy UAVs in the intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance roles, ISR. Not only has the portfolio grown in terms of the breadth of capabilities, but also the size of the vehicles themselves has grown. The larger the UAV, in relative terms, then the greater the payload. 
Iranian systems can be fitted with a variety of electro-optical sensors and weapons. How do Iran's drones compare with others in the region? There is quite a gulf in terms of technology. Western equivalents are going to be considerably more capable than what Iran produces. Iran's medium to large UAVs can probably stay in the air for up to 20 hours while carrying fairly sophisticated sensors, payloads, and a range of weapons. That's the other element that we've seen Iran develop small weapons suitable for UAV carrying and use. While Iran's drones don't stack up in terms of technology, their capabilities can't be dismissed. These systems are designed around what Tehran needs. Iran doesn't necessarily want an extremely capable system which may demand highly capable operators, which it may yet not have. And the UAVs and direct attack munitions have to be cost effective. Has Iran exported its drones to regional allies or proxies? Yes. Drone exports help build relationships with regional actors. Iran has supplied drones to Hezbollah in Lebanon and the Houthis in Yemen. Tehran puts these capabilities in the hands of its network of regional actors so it can influence their behavior. Iran can also make considerable mischief for some of its regional rivals. The Houthis have claimed a variety of attacks using UAVs, ballistic systems, and cruise missiles. An awful lot of that technology doesn't actually originate from inside Yemen. These systems strongly resemble Iranian systems. Exporting systems also allows Iran to see how their systems behave in a combat environment. 